Hi, it's Maria from the library. I'm really looking hey, forward to Hey, oh, good, good. Craig, you're there. Excellent. I see you. You're there. You're there, Craig. Excellent, excellent. I see you. This is great. So it's so nice to have you here. I have so many questions about tortoises and hares. We just, oh, I see that. That's yeah, kind of we have, yeah, we have a lot of, uh, you know, this is a, this is a classic um, Aesop fable and, you know, just a classic um, story and it's from Aesop and we um, just wanted to ask you more questions about the differences between a tortoise and turtles or hares and rabbits were probably a little bit, or at least I am a lot more familiar with rabbits as a word that I use more often than hares. And I use the word turtles more often than I use the word tortoises. But we have books on all of this information. So I have been looking at my books, but I wanted to talk to you because you know a lot about these animals. So. What can you tell us, Craig? Yeah, so first it's important to realize that turtles is a really big term for uh, turtles, terrapins, and tortoises. They're all very unique and very different. Um, although some kind of look the same. So actually, I have a turtle. Now turtles are usually, uh, they can be terrestrial or land uh, living. They can be semi-aquatic, meaning they, can, they have the ability to swim around, but they also like to hang out on land. That's like or me. Or they can be fully aquatic. Okay. I'm a semi-aquatic. Semi I'm semi-aquatic. I, I really do like to be in the water, but I can't yeah, live in the water. Or you can just I run through the that. sprinkler. Yeah. What's that? Or even just run through the sprinkler now. No. Oh. I think that might still count as terrestrial. Okay, like being in the rain. <laughs> yeah. But I actually have with me, I have another animal ambassador. This is Lemon. Lemon. It's an eastern fox turtle. But she is a terrestrial turtle. So turtles are good. Yeah, you have a book. Look at that. Perfect. We have a lot about so, turtles that are aquatic or semi-aquatic. They usually have a pretty flat shell, but you can see that lemon's shell is pretty big to the dome, isn't it? Pretty yeah. Small. Yeah. Now that's usually a characteristic of tortoises, but tortoises have different kind of head shapes. You can see a woman's head here. I don't really have a good comparison of a, tort of a tortoise head, but there are differences in the head. And there are also differences, oh, there we go. There are big differences in the feet. Uh -oh. Let's see if I can get one of lemon's little feet here. Now, lemon's feet are designed to move around in the muddy, great black swamp. So, she's got some pretty stubby legs, but they're really power. But you can see, can you actually see the little toes she has? Yeah, yeah. Let me see here. Come on. There we go. Can you see her little toes? Yeah. She's got toes and she's got some claws there to help her move around in the soil. But tortoises, they you can't see their toes coming out of their feet. They're very elephant-like. they got big tree trunk-like legs. Those are some good differences. Oh, look at the neck on that for <laughs> But we also have some semi-aquatic turtles. So if ever you're out doing your kayaking or even walking around uh, the Maumee River and you see some turtles on a log, those are also turtles. Those could be aquatic or semi-aquatic turtles. There's now, some differences. Now, is that different from a sea turtle? Yes, absolutely. Sea turtles are the only ones that have true flippers. They're obviously designed to be in the water. Now, our semi-aquatic turtles, ones like the Midland Tame Turtle or the now naturalized red-eared spider, they have feet that are kind of like uh, lemons here, only they'll have weapons in between their toes so that as they're going through the water, they'll have big flippers that can 
push the water as they're swimming. Do they swim like this, Craig, or do they swim more like breaststroke? Well, let me actually, let's see. I'm going to move my camera here. Hold on a second. This one, this one kind of looks like it's flying. This is Monet. <gasps> oh, Monet. Now, Monet is a Midland painted turtle, another native turtle to our area, just like the box turtle. And you can see, look at her feet. Look at them go. Can you see the flippers? Uh huh, uh huh, uh huh. Well, it's not really flippers, but the webbing in between the toes. That would really help. Oh. So would, would Monet live like half the time in water and half the time on land, or? Now Monet, Monet is a Byzantine turtle. They're going to spend almost all their time around in water, but it will go up on land to lay their eggs, and it can climb up um, logs and stuff for basking. So lots of, lots of turtles live in our area in Wood County. Lots of different turtles. Do tortoises live in Wood County? I don't think that we have any tortoises. That is not a fact that I know 100%. Okay. But, they, but it, it looks like they like a, a very dry, um, maybe like the desert or um, a, a warmer climate maybe than, than ours because we do get swamp and the rain and that sort of thing. So I'm going to have to look again at, at this. Actually, I do think that there's a, a map. I think there might be a map. Uh-oh. Oh, she took a poop. That I think I'd, oh, that I think I'd like to see. <laughs> Is it little? Can you tell us about that poop? No, it's really stringy. Oh, okay. Wow. So, wow. We have a lot of books at the library. We don't have any turtles at the library. And our books at the library actually are classified either in the 500s, in the Dewey Decimal System under the 500s as pets, or they're classified um, under the in the 600s if they're um, wild animals. So mm -hmm. I know that, um, and we haven't gotten yet so much to um, rabbits, but I know that people have rabbits as pets and people also have rabbits as turtles. So we do classify them differently. If you're looking for a book about how to, um, you know, have a domesticated pet, or if you're looking for a book about how to observe you know, the, these animals in nature. So can you tell us a little bit about either ha having either of these animals as a pet? Because I'm sure that there are some listeners, watchers that have one or the other as a, as a pet. Can you tell us a little bit about what that would be like to have one of these and how you would go about sure. it? So it's very important to understand that wild animals need to stay wild. Even if you think they're cute, even if you think that they're hurt, even if you think that they won't thrive or something like that out in the wild, um, there are other organizations that can help determine if that wild animal um, needs your help, and they can bring it in to uh, remedy it back to the help so that it can live out in the wild. Um, most of you viewers are not one of those people, so please do not take a wild animal into your home and make it your pet or be its caretaker, okay? Even though you can get a box turtle, I of like this one here, as a pet from a pet store, make sure that they are a registered official pet store. Please do not get any backyard breeder kind of turtle or snakes or rabbits of that kind, okay? okay? Thank you, uh, thank you, Craig. Thank you, because that's that's risky, isn't it? That's not good for the yeah. animal. If you if you were to take a wild animal out of the wild uh, and bring it into your home, that animal's already used to being out in the wild. And if you bring it in and you put it in an enclosure, it could a very stressful response, and it won't live very well. It's not going to eat or drink very well, and it could actually end up dying in your care. Even if you are providing 
violating everything that you believe in. Please yeah. keep violating up this while. And then the same thing, if you get an animal from a pet store and you are done with it, let's say, please do not release it into the wild. That is not a good idea either. That is a remedy for disaster because they're used to getting food from people. They've never known uh, the wilderness, so um, if you release a pet into the wild, then uh-oh, they're not going to know where to get food, so they won't live very long out there either. So there is a big difference. Just like we categorize these books, there's a big difference between a pet and a wild animal. Well, so tell us about um, rabbits and hares. Like speak, speaking of species, how does that work? How are they sure. related? So rabbits and hares is another one of those like uh, everybody might call a rabbit and a hare um, a rat or something like that, or you might call a rabbit a hare. <laughs> but they're very different species. Um, hares usually are a lot bigger. They have bigger ears, they have bigger bodies, they have bigger legs, um, and they are much less social than rabbits are. So rabbits, we know rabbits around here is a cottontail rabbit. That's the most common rabbit species in all of the United States. But when their baby rabbits are born, they're totally hairless, they don't have any, their eyes are closed, and they're totally helpless. They can't even regulate their own body temperature, even though they're an animal. But a hare, their period until birth is a lot longer. So when the baby hares are born, they have birth, their eyes are open, their body temperature can be regulated, and they're hungry, they're ready to eat. So they don't require as much mama care. They don't. And rabbits, uh, they can breed a lot faster. 30 so, days, I think I read. Yes. So within 30 days, 30 days um, actually it's about, it's about three weeks that a rabbit goes from being born to being totally independent of mom, not needing any parents or any help or anything. And they can have five litters, so they can give birth to two to eight rabbits at a time. They can give birth five times through the year. That is a lot of rabbits. Yeah, that's a lot Hairs, of they take a lot longer, so they produce a lot. Something else I read in our books is that um, rabbits burrow, so they go underground a little bit, and maybe that's where the babies will be more protected, but that hares live all above ground? That's correct. So that's with one exception. Oh, the okay. Rabbits, of course, oh. The most <laughs> oh, so our cottontail rabbits don't burrow. They don't. They'll make little nests or depressions in the ground that yeah. will be aligned with either uh, some grass, maybe some of mom's fur to keep it nice and warm. Mm -hmm. uh, but then after that, they're pretty much just on top of the ground. So that's Whereas more of a nest. Other rabbits species, they actually can make little burrows, and they have whole tunnel systems, um, complete with their rooms and all sorts of stuff. Yeah, we have a lot of stories like that, so, you know, it's, it's, that's really charming. So the hare has bigger ears. I think that when Jerry Pinckney drew, painted these pictures of, um, you know, the tortoise and the hare, he was very accurate. And I see that also the ears are a little, have some darkness here. So I think that that's also typical from what I've read of, of um, tortoises. Or I'm sorry, hares. Hares. But wow, look at those back legs. It's the whole back side of the book. That's mm -hmm. how, how they get so fast, huh? So. Yeah. And we do have, we do have one hare species that's native to Ohio, and that's the snowshoe. A lot of people may think of a snowshoe hare, if you've ever seen one before. Um, they typically have white fur in the winter. Uh -huh. But when, when the uh, snow all melts, that fur will actually turn brown. So they can stay camouflaged or hidden in their surroundings um, no matter what time of year that it is. 
Now, unfortunately, the snowshoe hare actually became extirpated, which means uh, it no longer lives in the area. So it became can you say that? Can you say that word again, Craig? Because I want to repeat it. Extirpated. Extirpated. Okay. Extirpated. So it sounds kind of like extinct. Mm -hmm. No means like gone. That's forever. Never ever coming back. But extirpated just means that that animal cannot be supported in the area anymore because maybe its food source is gone. It doesn't have the habitat that it used to to support itself. Things like that. So it's not likely for them to come back. However, they were excavated in the early 1900s, but ODNR, Division of Wildlife, has been reintroducing snowshoe hares lately in northeastern Ohio. Okay. Just because they deem that that's the best place, it has the best resources for them to make a comeback. But it's okay. pretty exciting. Yeah, that's really exciting. So they've been reintroduced. And and mm -hmm. and they're sustaining themselves. Then they're reproducing and having more babies. And well, it's always there's always a lot of science behind it. So they think that it's a good time to reintroduce them, and they'll be researching them very closely to see how indeed they are reproducing, what are they eating, where are they going. And then they'll make more educated decisions for um, the betterment of that species going forward based on that information. Wow. I wonder if there's some citizen scientists who are also watching and reporting back to the, the Department of Natural Resources, too. I'll have to look into that. Wow, but this would be in northeast Ohio, so not here in northwest Ohio. But yes, I, I wonder well, if. Here, right. I wonder if snowshoe hares were all around Ohio, though, at one, at one time before. Or maybe, maybe not so much in the black swan. They were pretty widespread. We had them all the way south of Columbus. Oh, wow. But that's a long, long time ago. They were extirpated in the early 1900s, so. Okay, okay. I don't know if wow. talk to anybody. Would, I think it would be, that. yeah, I think it would be really fun to be a naturalist and know so much about this and then to be a part of those kind of projects. You get to talk to kids um, all the time and explain animals that live in our area. What, what are some questions that kids like to ask about turtles? What are the, like they want to know about their shell and they want to know, they, they don't really, they're not like the snakes that we talked about where they ever lose their shell, do they? No, they definitely don't lose their shell. But the shell and, just, go ahead. the shell just gets bigger. The shell does get bigger as they grow, but then it just kind of, once they reach adulthood, it doesn't really grow much anymore. Right. However, I do have a lot of videos on this um, turtle time series. That will be on the Wood County Park District Facebook page or find Wood County Park District on YouTube. We have all sorts of educational videos there. Excellent. But I will be happy to talk about some turtle things right now. If you're oh, good. Yes, please. I'm happy to share some things with us. So, what is really cool, it's often are curious about, is of course the shell. It's one of the first things we see. It makes turtles totally unique to any other animal on the planet. But, first off, is what the shell is actually made of. Well, we know it's hard, but what we don't know, or what people usually don't know, is that this shell is actually an extension of the spine. If we were to go inside of Lemon's shell, we would see that her backbone, and everybody can kind of feel their backbone back there, it keeps us upright, supports everything else. That backbone is actually fused to the shell. They grow together, which means that the shell is actually made of bone. However, we know that bones bones usually get white, right? They all clean up and everything. But what makes Lemon's shell, then, is made of bone. How does it have these colors? Well, the shell is actually covered by a bunch of little plates. You can actually try to see the section a little bit. See you how know, they're kind of broken apart there. But they're actually divided into different sections, and there's little plates on there called hmm, which is a very fun word yeah. that you want to say with me. Yes, I do. Say it again. Hmm. Say it again, Craig. Scoops. 
Goose. Goose. That's right. Goose. Now, the goose are actually made of a protein, the same kind of protein that makes up our fingernails and our hair. Same stuff. Makes up lemons, goose. Now, those can hold on to some color. But what's super unique about box turtles, especially, is that even though there are many box turtles on the planet, even though there are so many box turtles and they're all the same species, each one has a totally unique pattern to it. Okay. No other box turtle is going to look like lemon. They may have the same colors as lemon, but this pattern is only lemons. A lot like a fingerprint. All of us are human, but we all look very different, don't we? Right. So, um, so lemon, how old is lemon? Lemon is about eight years old, but she could live to be 30, 50. There are some cases of box turtles in captivity even living to be over 100 years old. Wow, that's a huge commitment. Uh, especially if you want to buy a box turtle from a pet store and have it as a pet. What are you going to be doing in a hundred years? <laughs> I'm not going to be here. <laughs> wow, wow, a hundred years. So that's why probably why a lot of stories have turtles as being very wise. You know, we characterize animals with, with stories oftentimes that, you know, a turtle is very wise and slow and steady wins the race and maybe a rabbit is a little bit more impulsive and maybe a little bit more jittery or you know obviously very quick because it gets away from its predators hey what do, what do turtles eat well turtles can be totally vegetarian or they can be omnivorous which means that they eat both meat stuff and plant stuff uh, by meat stuff, I mean maybe some other animal parts. So, Lemon here actually likes to eat, in captivity anyway, she likes to eat tomatoes and strawberries and blueberries, but also she loves to eat worms. Now that would be animal. That makes her omnivorous. And, and rabbits? Like a rabbit and a, and a um, hare, they are... Vegetarian? They are vegetarian, that's right. Now their diet will definitely be different depending on where they live. I'm sure a lot of homeowners are used to maybe some cottontail rabbit feasting on their garden vegetables. Yes, yes, yes. We'll put up all kinds of little fences and they plant things <laughs> to try to like d discourage the rabbits, but the rabbits are pretty plentiful, so they're very hungry and they're reproducing quickly, so. Yeah. And I'm sorry, say it again. And they're clever. They're very clever, yeah, yeah. Yeah. They're and, and they're quick. They can get, get there quickly. So do rabbits um are they like the animals that are awake during the day or are they awake at night? I see them during the day, so I think that they must be more daytime animals. Yeah. So rabbits, even though they're awake during, they can be awake during the day, rabbits more or less are something we like to say they're crepuscular. Ooh, say crepuscular. that again. Say that again. Crepuscular. Crepuscular. Which means they're not diurnal, which means they're mostly active during the day. They're not nocturnal, yeah. which means that they're active during the night. They're crepuscular, so they are most active during twilight hours, so like dawn and dusk, just when things are getting light or just when things are getting dark. Notice that with the deer, maybe yes. because they're bigger, they're easy to see during the dusk, especially. And yeah, and then the turtles, are they nocturnal or are they? Say it again, capustral. <laughs> Crit. Crit. Put. Put. Q. 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 
Crepuscular. 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 I got it. Is, is that what turtles are? Crepuscular? No, not typically. They'll typically be um, diurnal, but they'll also like want to stay, if they live in a more arid or warm environment, they'll obviously want to stay out of the sun or else you know, they may dry out and they walk hurt just like we do. Well, Craig, you know so much. I'm going to actually have to call you again. But could, could people email you questions if they were interested? People can certainly email us questions at WC, or well, they can go to our website, wcdpl.org, or they can email us at woodkids dot, or at wcdpl.org. They can also call us. So all of these books and more are available to check out at our curbside service here at the library. So we're encouraging people to call us at 419-352-5050 um, to request any and all of these books or any other books. You can also go on to our website and go to the catalog to request books as well. How do people get a hold of you if they want to ask more questions? Well, I'll, I'm going to be calling you again, but... Okay. Well, they can personally get a hold of me at C Spicer, S P I. C E R at WCParks.org or they can give us a call at 419-661-1697. Nice. Craig, thank you so much. I do look forward to talking to you again. And I'm going to be watching um, again some more of the Turtle Time videos and all the other um, information on your Facebook page because I, I learn a lot and it makes me want to ask even more questions. So, and it really makes me yeah, and it really makes me want to go outdoors and explore our parks. So thank you. Oh, Craig, tell us like where would be like name a couple of the parks in Wood County where we could find turtles the best. Which ones? Because there's so many. Well, it depends on what kind of turtles that you're looking for. So you could head to Otsego Park next to the Maumee River to find some aquatic sense. turtles. Or for some fox turtles, and maybe even snakes, some reptile uh, cousins of turtles, um, you could head to Cedar Creek's Preserve. You could head to WW Knight Nature Preserve. You could head to Sawyer Quarry Nature Preserve. You could head to well, Baldwin Woods, or so even Bradner Nature Preserve. All of those are sure to have all sorts of different wildlife. Okay, well, I'm I'm going to head out to some um, Wood County parks and keep my eyes open for some turtles. So, and I'm going to just open up my window and look at the rabbits in my backyard. So, thank you very very much, Craig. I really appreciate talking to you, and thank you for sharing lemon with us. Absolutely. Lemon had to go walk around and spread her legs a little bit. I think I do too, and I hope that all of you guys go outside yes. and spread your legs. Thank you, Craig. Take care. See ya.